A, B, split testing. You know it's important, you know you should do it, but unless you're a Thrive Architect user, it's really freaking hard to set one up inside of WordPress until now. Hey guys, I'm John from IncomeEdge.com. In this video, you're going to learn how easy it can be to set up a split test using a new software as a service tool called Split Hero. Now, until this point in time, setting up split tests inside of WordPress either requires extremely expensive tools, extremely complicated tools, or extremely restrictive tools. So like the expensive ones, you know, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's really designed for people who have entire marketing and analytics departments to kind of run and do this stuff. On the free but complicated side, you've got Google Optimize, you've got Google Tag Manager, which I'll do tutorials on later on in the future. However, even if you've done a few of these tests before, they can be kind of hard and tricky to set up, leading you to not actually do them. And then on the restrictive side, you've got tools like Thrive Optimize, which are super simple to use, really effective, really good, but they only work with Thrive Architect and Sendal if you want to do revenue transaction tracking until now. And so in this video, we're going to show you Split Hero, which let me just show you the website real fast. So split here is split testing for WordPress. Um, it is a very, very easy to use tool. It works with every page builder. So if you're using Breezy, Oxygen, Beaver Builder, Elementor, even Thrive, if you choose to use it with them, uh, it will work absolutely. Even with Gutenberg, you're able to now uh, do conversion optimization within your pages. So uh, we'll do a full review on this in a later video. I'll link that down in the description below. But right now, let's go ahead and build out our first uh, split test so you can see exactly how easy it is to do this on your own website. Now, one thing I want to cover before we dive into the platform is the pricing is very reasonable. If you are running revenue from your business, if you're making money from your business, you owe it to yourself to make yourself convert higher. And to $27 a month to be able to run three active campaigns at once is, in my opinion, a worthwhile investment because what does that mean? That means that you'll be able to split test your landing page to make sure that your landing page is converting as high as it possibly can. It also means if you have a sales page, you can convert, you can split test that to make sure it's converting as high as it possibly can, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll show you a very basic one today where we just want to get, we want to optimize the clicks on a call to action button, and then we'll do a more advanced tutorial later on. Okay, so enough talking. So if you wanted to sign up, you can go to incomesh.com slash split here in the link in the description below. And you can uh, just create your free account there and get started for 14 days for free and see if it's right for you and your business. So once you do sign in, you'll be able to connect your website by going to domains over here. And it'll give you an API key that you'll just want to copy and paste. You'll download this WordPress plugin and upload the plugin onto your website. And then uh, let me just show you what that looks like. So here's the website I'm testing this tool with. If we come into the dashboard and plugins, you can see we've already installed Split Hero here in the settings side. So it's, you know, to set this up, it couldn't be easier. Step one, you insert that API token that's going to connect the uh, website with your own website, the, the tool with your website. And then step two is you want to sync your posts and pages between the two services. And this is going to allow you to automatically route traffic from each one of your pages. And we'll show you that in this step-by-step -step tutorial. And then finally, you're going to go and create a campaign for your split test. So in this particular test, what I want to do is I want to test two different pages that are going to look radically different. It's not going to be a very simple A, B test where you just change a headline and maybe a button color. Uh, you're going to be able to change all the content on a page, have entirely unique page designs and test them against each other to see which conversion page gets clicked most often. Okay. Let's go and do that and make that very clear for you. If you haven't run a split test in the past, I've got a link in the description to my free course convert, and that's going to help you understand kind of the entire concept behind split testing, as well as how to use split testing inside of, I think, four or five different tools I teach in that course at this point. And the library is always growing. So let's come here to our pages. And what we're going to do is we're going to test out uh, something radical. Let's test a Gutenberg built page versus an Elementor built page and split test them against each other. I don't think that's ever really been as easy to do as it is today. So we'll call this Gutenberg. So we have our Gutenberg variation and let's just add a simple, I don't have any blocks on here. So let's just go and give a heading. So a very obnoxious headline. I would not recommend this be a headline you want to use, but you want to you download this tool, right? And I'll put a button in here and we'll say, we'll say, get it now. And let's also put in an image. We'll just come here to image. We'll go to our media gallery. I think I should have some images in here and we'll have this guy be our salesperson. He looks pretty convincing. And what I need to do is actually have the 
thank you page created as well. This is going to be the page that we want to make sure that people get sent to to say we have success. And this would be like a thank you page. This would be a um, uh, thank you order confirmation page, something of that nature uh, that you could use. So let me uh, do that as well. I'm going to publish this page. I'm going to make a new one here. And on this page, we're going to call this thank you for converting. And let's build this page in Elementor just to show you this is totally um, agnostic. You can use any tool you want to uh, in tandem and it works just fine. All right, so we have this page here. Let's um, open our navigator. This template here has a little bit of padding at the top, so let's pull everything down here a little bit. And we'll say thank you for your amazing conversion. We'll add a little image in here and a little happy lady. All righty, so we're, we're clearly, this is a conversion thank you page. And you know, just to make it somewhat realistic, I tend to want to use the Elementor Canvas for conversion pages because that takes away the header, the footer, or anything else that you really don't need for this page. So we'll publish this page and let me have a look. And we'll see now it's called Thank You for Converting is the name of this page, a very simple page. So I'm gonna take this URL, I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna come back to my Gutenberg variation. This is the basically the opt-in page. So you could have a form here, you could have um, uh, even a purchase order form as well, whatever you really want. And I'm gonna come here and I'll paste in the conversion. So if they click this button, I want that to be considered a conversion because they're doing whatever action I want them to do. All right, well, let's add one more variation here. So I'll say add new page and we'll call this Elementor variation. And let's open this with Elementor. And once again, let's go Elementor Canvas. And what I want to do on this page is just make a very simple, let's use one of their uh, simple blocks. We'll come into Elementor. We'll do the block template library. And let's just do a simple call to action section here. Okay. Get my free thing, some text and the purchase now button. I'm also going to send to that thank you page. And with, you know, we can also just type in thank you for converting. And that should also pull up the page there. Very good. Okay, so we have these two pages. Last thing I wanna show you is that you don't need to start over from scratch for every single page. If you just wanted to change the headline, for example, uh, let's just go ahead and we can take this entire page. Let's say it's a long sales page and you wanna test out different testimonials or something of that nature, some segment uh, section within that se uh, entire page. We can come here and save this entire page as a template. And we'll call this one Elementor sales example. And I'll save this. All right, very good. So we have that uh, template here. And if I exit to my dashboard, I'm gonna create one more page just to show you that we don't need to start from scratch every single time. And we'll call this an Elementor variation two. And let's go ahead and edit with Elementor. So if I don't wanna start from scratch, I can come here to my library and under my templates, I'll also be able to see that Elementor sales example we just created. And we wanna import the document settings so it goes back to full width, goes back to all that good stuff, just like this. So now we're exactly where we left off. If we wanted to then change this button color, for example, because everybody loves changing button colors, it's the cool thing to do. We'll go from green, and then on the hover, we want it to go black. So just kind of invert the, the style here. <laughs> I'm sure that's gonna make a big difference. And let's also add an image in. All right, so now we have an image in, we have a different button color. We'll go ahead and publish this, and let's have a look. So these should take me over to my conversion page. Okay, and that's my funnel. It's as simple as it gets, but you can imagine this could be uh, probably like a pop-up that's gonna take you to an uh, email opt-in form and then take you over here or something of that nature. So there's a lot you can do, but the whole goal here is to keep it simple for the, very, uh, for the tutorial. Another thing I want to remind you of is when you're doing split tests, you wanna take care of what your URL slugs are. So you might decide, uh, you know, basically, Create your control. Create the first variation that you want to kind of uh, start with, kind of your expected winner, and then you'll test on top of that to try to uh, beat that. Uh, for that expected winner, take care in what you name that that permalink. You know, right now I have Elementor variation two. You'd probably want to have uh, you know get my free thing or whatever the actual call to action URL is you want to send people to 
because whatever wins will be able to take over that link in the future. So you won't have to always have these like really ugly uh, URL variations over time. So just a small little pro tip there. Okay, so we have our pages set up. We've created three different variations of our opt-in page and simply one variation of our thank you page, which is perfectly fine. So now let's go back into our dashboard here. And under settings and split hero, we want to go ahead and set up our test. So to do that, all we need to do is click the sync button. And this is going to push all the new pages we just created over to our split hero account and vice versa. And then we can click this button here to create a campaign. And I have a test one running as well, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. And if you have multiple websites linked up to your account, you'll, these will all be listed here, but I've only used this one website at the time. So we'll use this domain and we'll call this one three variations for CTA click. You also might want to give some additional notes about what this test is, why you're running it, what your hypothesis is, all that good scientific method stuff. We'll click next. And now choose up to four URLs to split test. Here's where I advised you to pick the one that you really think is going to win. Make that the first one. So if I come here to select my options, I think we have the Elementor variation, Elementor variation two, and the Gutenberg variation. So these are the three that I just created. So I'm going to come here and let's assume Elementor variation one is going to be the, the incumbent, like the guy on the throne. And then test B is going to be Gutenberg variation. And test C is going to be the Elementor variation two. Okay, so these are my three testers. How easy is that? It's so easy. And then uh, test D, you can run up to four pages in tandem, which is pretty cool. Uh, but three is enough for this test. We'll go ahead and say next. Now, what is the essential conversion page? This is what you know where you want to send people to. So I created, thank you for converting. That was the one we just created today. And so once people land on that page, we'll assume that they're a winner and we'll give credit to the page that actually sent them there. And then when do you want to start the test? I think today is the second. Yep. So from today, and it'll ask you, do you want to run it for a week, for two weeks? And I'll tell you what happens, which is kind of interesting about this in a second. So we'll say, okay, today's good. And then confirm and run. <clears throat> okay, so it's going to show up here as our three variations for CTA click. We have our good, our kind of overall details. Let's just refresh this page and it should be running now. Okay, it shows it's still pending. I'm going to come back to my dashboard and show you a couple things while we wait for it to kind of kick off. So if we look at a different test that I've been running, a homepage conversion test, it gives you a lot of cool statistics um, for all of those geeky guys like me out there that want to see the numbers. Uh, for the test you're running, it'll show you the stats of how it's been doing. It'll show you the number of conversions by variation. So you can see the only vari the only success I've had on this campaign has been variation one of my homepage. It'll also show you how much traffic you've had in each variation, how many conversions, what the conversion rate is of the ongoing uh, test, and how many what's the bounce rate of that test as well. So all that's really useful information, but you have to kind of uh, control yourself to not a jump to conclusions. You know, this is very natural. If you run two days of a test and you're like, oh my gosh, B is absolutely crushing A and C, uh, but then you give it seven more days and all of a sudden they kind of converge in and sometimes even, you know, C or A can outperform B. So you have to be careful with jumping to conclusions with split testing. Let's come back to our campaigns. Okay, so these are both running now. All right, so they're starting to collect my data. So what we can do is let's go ahead and pull up the URL of that first page. And let me show you how this kind of looks for the user. So Elementor variation was the, the guy that I really wanted, the, the, uh, the first variation there. So I'm going to open up in Firefox and I'm going to paste this URL in and I'll hit enter. And you can see it actually took me to Gutenberg variation. You can see Gutenberg variations at the top here. So it did the redirect and it, decided randomly to put me on this uh, variation. So if I click this button, this should track as a conversion. I'll give it a few seconds for it to kind of wake up and, and make sure it's all working and tracking correctly. So let me do a couple more variations and see if we get, um, uh, if, if it's tracking correctly. So I'll come in, we'll paste the URL again. Okay, 
same one. So let me go to a different browser. And so I'm not going to convert on this one. Let me go to a different browser here. We'll go to Edge, paste it in again. And now you can see we have a different variation. This is Get My Free Thing with the black and green button. Let's not convert here. So we'll bounce off this page. And let's try it again. Okay, same one again. We'll convert this time. Cool. Let me also check on Internet Explorer. And we'll run this test once more. Oh, what is this? That was weird. So let's try this one more time in Firefox. I'll come here and let me clear all my stuff. All right, let's try this again. And we're back to the Gutenberg variation. So it's obviously it's random. We're not going to keep testing this forever, but we're showing that it's picking up different variations. Let's see if there's any data being tracked at this point inside of Split Hero. So we'll come back to the dashboard here. And we can see here we have more conversions. So I think that if we go into our three variations for CTA click, it will start collecting data and showing it very shortly here. And just going back to our dashboard, checking on the one that we do have running, it's going to give you data like this that you'll be able to watch day after day. And um, so you can track and measure which one's performing better and iterate over time. So I hope this is helpful, guys. Um, Split Hero is a new uh, service. I am still testing it out myself. I'm going to give some a few more tutorials on this tool, and I'll give you a full review in the coming days. So be sure to check out the description below for those future videos that are coming out very shortly. I'm John from Incomesh.com. Again, if you're interested in improving your own conversion rate optimization strategies, I do have a free course for you. It's called Convert. It's available in my uh, online school, my university area. So go ahead and click down below to sign up for that, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.